What's the word? What's the word, baby? You know we back in the saddle. All right. Now we not on a regular schedule programming because of what? Um, yeah, we ran out of time, man. All right. But it was a blast of a show on Thursday. Um, both of the interviews that we had, Jordan Zumwalt, former teammate, was good catching up with him. Then we obviously got a chance to talk to the big rap goat, Ramon Foster. Man pulled up on the show as well. It was fire all right if you haven't had a chance to check out those interviews and all the clips from that man i definitely encourage you to check that out all right but um we also had a ton of super chats coming in that day because there was a lot of action going on right we knew russell wilson was coming in for a visit um it was uh the first time that we got public information from the Steelers and Russ about that. So, you know, obviously that took president, man. But, um, you know, it was a ton of super chats that came in also. So, like I said, I'm definitely going to uh, address all of the remaining super chats in this video. But um, before we get to that, we also had something else transpire um, since the podcast, man. Allen Robinson. Um, obviously, we know he started for us last year in that slot receiver, wide receiver three role. But we officially... Um, are going to release him as well and um you know just kind of adds another hole or another void to the roster granted this isn't something that we weren't expecting because obviously um when we just talked about his production the cost and um just what we're trying to see out of that slot position or even opening up a door for a calvin austin potentially to uh get more snaps we knew that alan robinson was going to be you know a higher probability for uh, becoming a cap casualty. And it's just part of the, the, the nature of the beast, man. We played this game long enough, it happens. Um, still a really good player, man. We obviously know we use, utilized him more in a blocking role. Um, I'll be interested to see where he lands potentially just because of some of the route running and some of just the production from a catching standpoint wasn't what it typically is for Allen. Now, obviously, we know there's a lot of variables at play, and it is what it is. But um, like I said, man, definitely let me know in the comment section your thoughts on Allen Robinson getting released as well since, like I said, we haven't had a chance to address that just yet. But um, with that being the case, y'all hit that like button one time for the culture, and don't forget to subscribe, all right? So let's tap in, man. We're going to address all of the Super Chats that were remaining from Thursday's podcast episode, all right? So the first one, man, that uh, we had remaining was Colton Choi Fu. Shout out to the homie Colton Choi Fu. He says, listened to AB's interview on the PBD podcast was hard to listen to. AB sounds all the way gone like he couldn't understand the questions and just argued was he always like that question mark everyone blames the hit man um, people blame the hit because it's love hanging fruit they think that that is the simplest way to uh, justify something that they don't really understand or um it just doesn't appear to be normal um if that's how people want to go i mean we let them do what they do everybody's entitled to their own beliefs and stuff like that um just what i would say is this man knowing a b as a teammate for four seasons, pre-hit and still being a teammate with him post-hit. No, I do not feel like there was any change in his behavior stemming directly from that hit versus Vontez Perfect. Absolutely not. AB has been AB. It's just publicly he's showing people a little bit, you know, more than um, what they have been privy to before and i think that that has caught a lot of people off guard just when you think of ab's brand prior to you know everything that's transpired over the past year to two years and stuff like that man but um now i don't directly you know put that hit on ab and say oh yeah this is the direct reason as to why his actions are what they are because if that's the case it would be a lot more nfl players acting the way that he acts because Vontez perfect isn't the first one to hit somebody hard to cause a concussion and unfortunately probably won't be the last one either but everybody that has been hit like that whether it's from Burt Fick and anybody else they haven't typically acted in the way that Antonio Brown has acted so no as much as I would love to just say hey man this was the reason why and we could just make it feel good nah unfortunately that is not the case man but um wish my dog all the best going forward man Ho hopefully you know everything gets settled with my dog over there man all right next that we had dustin klein shout out to you dustin he says hope all is well hit the like button well you know that's something i can get behind so uh hit the like button why not i mean the homie dustin said it all right simple next up after that we had nick dong nick dun gang 23 Nick Dong Gang. I don't even know what that means, bro. But it sounds good, though, all right? I like your energy, baby. He says, Jerry Dulac, 
a scab PPG, been on strike for a year plus. Man, all right, guess he's not a fan of Jerry Dulac. Well, your personal opinions about Dulac are your personal opinions. That has nothing to do with me. But what we do know is he was very accurate with his statement because he said that Russ was pulling up and uh, Russ pulled up. So there we have it, man. All right. <laughs> Let's see who we got next in the building, man. Richard R. Bezo. Shout out to the homie Richard R. Bezo. He says, bring Russ and Tyrod. Best QB room in the league. Now, that is something I can get behind. You obviously know Russell Wilson um, when we're talking about the price point and the production, whether we're talking what he did last season or as a full body of work. Yeah, that would be a major upgrade to our current quarterback situation. We talk about bringing Tyrod Taylor in, former pro bowler, guy that's led a team to the postseason, a guy that has a lot of experience and has been on a roster that has won a Super Bowl. Yeah, that would be a nice upgrade to our current quarterback room. And then the remaining guy would be Kenny Pickett. So, yeah, you're talking about a first rounder, a Super Bowl champ, <clears throat> uh, another Super Bowl champ, slash a guy that led his team to a playoff game as well, man, in Buffalo and Tyrod Taylor, man. So, yeah, I, I don't disagree. That would be a dope QB room. And for the, you know, cost, fairly affordable too, man. So I'm not hating that. I'm not hating that at all, baby. So salute you on that. Mac the Guru Baltimore game or Baltimore game excuse me on that one Mac the Guru Baltimore game and you know I appreciate you rocking with me just know that I uh, you know that I know that you know that I know that you know that I rock with you so I appreciate you <laughs> he says sign Russ let Kenny back up and draft someone late Russ for that cheap can help Kenny learn more and that is something that I honestly do feel um we get lost <coughs> excuse me we kind of get lost in the competition element of it, and uh, we kind of allow that to overshadow the positivities of a Russ being here, not for an on-field standpoint, but in a locker room standpoint. Being able to watch tape and have Kenny Pickett be able to ask Russell Wilson questions about what he's seeing, how does he play this, what coverage is he expecting here, pre-snap disguises that Russell Wilson has seen and has become you know, a lot more comfortable with. Those are all valuable nuggets that Kenny Pickett could be learning from Russ picking his brain in every chance he gets, let alone when he's actually out there on the field watching him in a practice setting, watching him in a game setting. I think it could be extremely beneficial. And I say that because I'm a guy that benefited from, you know, sitting behind older players or at least having older guys on the roster with me when I was in Buffalo. And then when I transitioned to Pittsburgh. It mattered having a guy like Troy Palomalu here. It mattered seeing Heath Miller. It mattered having James Harrison here. Those type of guys, man, are staples. Brett Kiesel. It mattered, all right? So when you have guys that have already done it, has already had success, and they come back and they get a chance to show and verbally articulate what it takes to be successful at this level, I don't think you could ever have enough of those guys around, man. So that's definitely another reason that bringing Russ into me would be just a uh, awesome move man all right but let's see man uh all right let's get to the next super chat and like i said man if y'all if y'all digging what we doing right now like i said man this is the uh the makeup stream the uh these were the remaining super chats and it was a lot of y'all out there salute to each and every one of y'all it's a good problem to have i don't mind doing these bonus one off let's clean up what we left off on you know what i mean because that's how y'all supporting the channel man so i appreciate y'all to make sure we do our due diligence to make sure y'all feel appreciated as well, all right? But uh, Paul Bennett, shout out to Paul Bennett, says, get Russ, drop Mason, draft Joe Milton the third in the fourth round. Now, listen, if Joe Milton is there in the fourth, sure, man, I love it. Pick him up. It's a great low risk, extremely high reward potential. We've obviously had Terrence Garvin, TG, pull up on the show multiple times talking about just the unicorn element, even though, yeah, it's going to take some work and there is a legitimate chance that it will be a bust. If it does hit, though, you have one of those guys. Now, the problem is, is it available in the fourth or is another team going to try to take him earlier because of some of that stuff? Those are legitimate questions. And I think that's, you know, kind of where we are with it. But in terms of bringing in Russ, I love it. I do think if you bring in Russ, Mason is not going to be as eager to come back. So it probably would be best to go in a different direction from him. And yeah, man, I like your energy, Paul. I like it a lot. Holden, you just showing me some love, man. So salute you for showing that love, man. Definitely appreciate you. GF, what it do, GF, what it do? <clears throat> GF says, the approved 
Mason to take a playoff game. They flew for Mason to take a playoff game off Kenny. So for a million dollars, if Rush starts, then Kenny lost that spot. Well, GF, <clears throat> excuse me. I would just simply say this, man. I agree. Uh, whenever you're looking at the tea leaves and you're asking yourself what type of starters have lost their spot due to injury um, and which type of guys have just been benched versus which starters have actually been hurt and then they come back and they pop right back into the starting line um that's kind of what ramon foster talked about in the interview when we were talking with him so yeah i'm not you know disagreeing with the thought process man and i do feel like russ coming in here for a million dollars i just think russ at this stage is a better player so i think that's more so at play but at the same time man um Kenny still has some good stuff about him, man, and Kenny still could develop. The question is, when will it happen? I think that's, you know, why we are where we are today is because of the time. It's not a question of can he do it. Yeah, we can. We, we do feel like he has the ability to do it. We've seen him do certain things. That's why the team took him in the first round. But how long does it take for it to get to the level that we needed to be? That's a totally different conversation. And uh, in a league like where we are with the NFL, man, you don't have the luxury of time always. So with a guy like Russ, it just, like I said, it can smooth over this situation while helping out with production for this team to get us to where we think we're capable of, man. So we shall see, man. We shall see. But shout out to you, GF. I like your mindset, baby. I definitely do. All right. Next up, we got the homie 828 Style. Shout out to you, 828 Style. You always rocking with me, man. So you know it's always love, baby. But uh, 828 Style says, Deke, praying like a mug that Russ don't sign with us. LOL. If we do sign Russ, Deke gonna cry in the car. Now, my dog Deke is conflicted, but at the same time, he fighting like a son of a gun. One minute, he was like, he's loving Russ. Next, he was like, bro, he's not tripping on Russ. Then he's like, you know, I'm having you on the Kenny, but I understand if it's Russ. It's a lot for him. It's a lot for him, man. But at the end of the day, if Russ is the guy, whoever is the guy, as long as they are winning, I think that he will be just fine. But we got to win. That's the day, man. We got to win. And we got to do what we're supposed to do with the talent that we have. Because we do have, in my opinion, a lot more talent than what the production was uh, showing. All right. All right. Next up, shout out to the homie Anthony Lashley. Shout out to Anthony Lashley, by the way. Says, Deke got to sell. Or, Deke got a jersey to sell. Dot, dot, dot. Cheap. Talking about that Mason Rudolph, man. But that was still an epic moment, guy. Right? An epic moment in time, man. So, regardless of how we look at it, man, it was still elite. It was still fire. So, salute my dog, all right? Salute my dog. Sean McCartney. Shout out to you, Sean McCartney, as well, man. He says, I said it before. I'm, o I'm okay with competition. But don't go crying if Kenny is still QB1. If Q if Kenny ain't QB1, I'll be okay as long as we are winning. Oh, yeah, man. Trust me. If it's an open competition and Russ is here, like I said, outside of injury, I do feel strongly about Russ winning the competition. Um, what I will say is this. Who Kenny competes with is going to matter, though. And we've kind of explained that, man. I do feel that... If it is Mason Rudolph that Kenny is competing against, yeah, there is a very, very, very strong possibility that they will still roll with Kenny, regardless of what we all might feel from an optic standpoint. And that's also something that I'm sure still a nation has some uh, some grievances with. All right. So that's the part where it's like, man, if you can bring Russ in here for the mill, you just feel like it's more legitimate. You feel like if Kenny did beat him out, it would be a legitimate, okay, we all saw this. He won. It is what it is. Like, let's ride. We feel great about it. But if not, we would totally understand why. And I think for Kenny and the organization, it wouldn't be as bad of a move when you're talking about being Russ for the price that you're bringing Russ in. It's almost like, hey, man, we're kind of forced into this situation because of the money, right? So we shall see, though. We shall see. A couple days, though, man. It could happen at any moment, so we will find out soon enough, man. Uh-huh, uh-huh. AJ Martinez was also being a rock star, paying it forward with some upper room membership. Salute you on that. But then he also says, let's go three, destroy eight, four Super Bowls if Russ comes to town. 
man, so we saying, go ahead, bring in Russ. We're going to get rid of Kenny. We win in multiple Super Bowls. I love the energy, AJ. You know I love the energy. And trust, Russ want to get two and five. So, hey, man, however we got to do it, let's just get one first, and then we get the rest of them after that, all right? But I like y'all energy, 100%. Rue to the A. What up, Rue to the A? Kenny in the 2024 draft would be the blank quarterback taken. Um, In my opinion, I think Kenny would fall somewhere between Michael Penix, Bo Nix, um, J.J. McCarthy, I think he's in that vein. Um, some people might take J.J. ahead of him um, if they like what J.J. has, a little bit more athleticism. But at the same time, I could see people kind of siding with Kenny also in that vein because Kenny coming out of college that final year gave me some of the J.J. McCarthy vibes anyways. You know, so I think um, those guys, though, man, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, I think all of them kind of in that same vein. I don't think that Kenny would be, you know, flirting with these guys that we're talking about in terms of uh, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams. I don't think he would be in that conversation, but I do think that second tier, he would be legitimately in there. I'm, yeah, we just have to remember that we're seeing some of the shortcomings of him at the pro level, and that is obviously going to have its effect on our opinion of him now as it stands, whereas these younger guys we're talking about, we've only seen them collegially. Yeah, I think Kenny's last season collegially, he was a Heisman finalist, right? So he was cooking. He was kicking butt. So that's my only, uh, I guess, like grievance or disconnect when we're doing the him versus the guys that are coming out now. We just had a chance to see him struggle at the NFL level. So I do still think, though, he would be, you know, top five, top six in terms of the quarterback select. I think he still would be in that conversation with this class, though. All right, all right. Ethan Leach. He says, how do y'all feel about Xavier Leggett? Um, I don't have a strong opinion on him right now, honestly, man. But what I'll do is I'll go watch some more tape on him, and then I will give you a more concrete answer uh, throughout the week. How about that, man? There we go. There we go. But salute you on that, though, man. Absolutely. All right. R2 Malvo. He says, hashtag Steelers Nation. Let's ride. Unlimited. Whoa. No. Oh, God. All right, can we can we talk about this, Mr. Unlimited? Uh, all right, bro. All right, Mr. Unlimited. No, he has his uh, alter egos, it's Mr. Unlimited. You know, it's, it's, when he wakes up in the morning, he's like, yo, yo it's going to be a great day today. I just said, I don't know, it's, it's Mr. Unlimited, all right? When he goes for advice, he's just like, what's it for? It's, it's, it's Mr. Unlimited, all right? I hated it. I'm sorry. I hated it. All right, that's the rest that I did. I, I don't like that part. I don't like that part, but that comes with Russ. It, it, Russ is Russ, all right? Russ is Russ. That Mr. Unlimited was different than what I saw in the Brandon Marshall interview with the, the, the you know, low-cut black tee. It's different, all right? It's different, but I'm going to work with it, all right? I can work with it. I can work with it, okay? For a million dollars, I can work with it, okay? So it would be unlimited. Jeez. <laughs> that was a lot. That was a lot. You know that was a lot. Mr. Unlimited. <laughs> A2A style also said I wasn't giving or I wasn't forgetting Russ, but knowing what his cap hit is, I'm all for it. Even if Russ can't cook like he used to, I'm sure his microwave is still better than the Steelers serving Kenny Cole cuts. Jeez Louise, eight two eight. Let me get something to drink over here. Y'all got my boy. <laughs> eight two eight over here. Good number my man Kenny, man. Call it the homie Kenny Cole cuts. Jeez. No, don't do him like that. No, no, no. Not Kenny Cole cuts, man. No, no, no. <clears throat> Kenny's a good guy, man. Let, let, let the good guy ride. Let the good guy ride. Maybe he should get an alter ego. Call him like Mr. Unlimited. I don't know. It might work. I don't think so, but it could. Could. All right. Xavier TG says, Deke makes me sick with this fourth quarter comeback stuff. The only reason we have to come back in the fourth quarter is because kp eights in the first second and third fair enough fair enough and yeah that is typically the rebuttal for the people that are you know critiquing kenny pickett those first three quarters they do have some legitimate gripes some legitimate concerns for the kenny supporters though what he does in the fourth quarter and how he's able to close out some of these games that is legitimately impressive so i get both sides of it but yeah, Xavier TG, I'm with you, baby. Them first three quarters, to me, they they still hold just as much weight as that fourth quarter finish, man. Um, 
So yeah, yeah, we got to get that answered sooner rather than later. Sooner rather than later. AJ Martinez says, hashtag save the Degla Sabotage 7. Just coming in from the top rope. Just showing my homie some love. I see you, AJ. 828 Style also says, I'm waiting to see that Big Deek news on Russ. Like I saw that news on coaches being mad about the KP8 hate. Deke, you hurried up and did that one. You still my guy, though. Oh, yeah, that's legitimate. That's legitimate. Now, you know, obviously this is... Uh, you know, I'm answering these retro uh, retroactively. So hopefully, you know, my dog, uh, my dog Deke has already dropped his big Deke news, responding, and reacting to some of that rest stuff. But yeah, that 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 is legitimate, cause he was that boy. He couldn't away. He came in off the top rope that day too. So salute, him, salute. Him. But yeah, that's legitimate, man. That's legitimate. All right. We also had Xavier TG joining the upper room. So welcome to the upper room. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Salute you. Kia La Mambarina. Shout out to Kia La Mambarina. It says, love hearing these two vets in the ciphers. Oh, man, respect to you, Kia. Yo, we appreciate you. It's always fun to talk to one of my homies like that, man. Um, like I said, me and Moon, man, we go back uh, four seasons, obviously playing together, played against him when I was in Buffalo. Uh, just a ton of respect for who he is as a person, as a husband, father. And obviously, as a professional, man, that was one of, like I said, one of my favorite dudes to compete against, man, share a locker room with. Just a dope dude, man. And obviously, what he's doing post-retirement, man, killing it in the media industry as well, man. Big time salute to the homie, man. Big time tip of the cap to him as well, man. Uh-huh, uh-huh. 828 Style also says, I think God Deke ain't running things because if KP8 played 20 years, he'd start him till he retired while hoping next year. Would be better than the last. Mm -mm -mm. He'd kill our tradition and run the brand to the grave. Woo! That's some legitimate grievances right there. That's some legitimate concerns, A2A style. The one thing that we would all agree upon is this, though, man. It will be filled with black and gold passion. All right? The passion will be there. Now, with the execution and production, what we want, uh, probably not. But the passion will be there. So, at least that's something to hang our head on. All right? And we are getting to the back end of this thing, too, man. Got two more of these supers that we're going to be reading off, man. So uh, let's get to them. Sean McCartney, he says, keep your head up, Deke. Chat likes, to let, chat likes to let out their frustrations on you. If they have that much energy, they can make their own channel. And this is also true, man. And that's whether we always say, man, whether it's Deke or myself, man. Hey, they watch. All right. So it can't be that bad because they still tuning in. And if they felt that strong about it, then they would go ahead and, you know, use their time and resources to create their own wave and start their own channel. So that is very legitimate right there. It's, it's salute you, Sean McCartney, man, for giving my dog some words of encouragement as well, man. I right, we appreciate you from the heart. And then we got Xavier TG finalizing the uh, Super Chats for the uh, show on uh, last Thursday. And he says, taking Kenny to spin class so he learns he can spin right out of the pocket. Oh, man. Oh. I ain't know you was going to dunk on him on the last one, too. Jeez, Xavier, jeez. But these are all legitimate. And uh, either way, like I said, I definitely appreciate all of those supers, man, that have been coming in. The way that y'all been rocking with us regular season, even in the off season. I mean, like I said, the support of the channel has been great. The growth of the channel has been great. And, yeah, we just going to keep our foot on the gas pedal and keep the content rolling, all right? So, once again, I appreciate each and every one of y'all for watching this vid. Everybody that dropped those super chats on the last live, man, we appreciate you. You know, we right back in the saddle this upcoming week. And until next time, baby, peace.